Hi, I'm Tom Zelenka. Now I'm just a beginner in the kitchen. In every episode of Carolina Cooking, I meet a different chef from a famous restaurant in the Carolinas Ooh. who'll teach me to cook their secret recipes mm. in just 30 minutes or less. Really good. Welcome to Carolina Cooking, shot on location at the mansion on Forsyth Park and the 700 Kitchen Cooking School. Now here's your host, Tom Zelenka. Hi, welcome to Carolina Cooking. I'm your host, Tom Zelenka. This is the show where we find the best chefs from the best restaurants all around North and South Carolina, and we bring them here to teach you and me their incredible recipes. Today we're doing a black and wild king salmon and scallops with some fruit salsa, some uh, pineapple and, uh, well, this is a melon, clearly, melon salsa. And to help us, to guide us through the culinary jungle is a chef from Cajun Queen in Charlotte, North Carolina, Chef Rob Gottfried. Chef, um, Good to, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming out. Hands full and today. Yeah, I was just uh, playing with my fruit, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, and these smell so good. Are these fresh? Yeah, very fresh. Mm -hmm. mm, ah, they smell incredible. Ah, I can't wait to cut the. Do we get to cut the pineapple? Oh, we get open? to cut it. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, You'll be dicing pineapple. pineapple. I'm excited. So that is what makes the salsa on top. These two yes. uh, melons here. A few peppers, then, a little spice. Okay, and uh, then also we have the salmon underneath, which is blackened. Yes. And we have scallops, which are blackened. Yes. And blackened is typically a what? Uh, Cajun. It is Cajun. Absolutely. Okay. Cajun queen. So okay. Cajun food is what we do. Blackening right. is. I mean, we consider our blackening seasoning, blackening seasoning very unique. Mm -hmm. We um try to make it so it's not too spicy, but it's got good season. That's how we explain our food. It's well seasoned. Yeah. It's not necessarily gonna put you in a hospital. Okay, <laughs> well, that's good, you know, because putting people in the hospital, it's not, it's, then they don't like to come back usually. Usually, Yeah, usually. exactly, unless you have great ambiance, Some, live music, oh, and have, then they're willing to come back. Live music every night, uh -huh. so right. they'll come back for the music then. So um, we're making blackened uh, salmon, and so are we gonna begin making the salmon? Yes, we will start with the salmon, off? absolutely. Right. I'm gonna set this over here. And this, I am saying, is a piece of salmon. Yes, if you okay. want to brush it with a little bit of the vegetable oil we have Alrighty. here. Is this a fillet of salmon that I could find at it the is. store? It is. You could find it anywhere at the store. It is wild salmon, oh. which doesn't run all year round. It's usually very abundant during from spring through the summer, and then you kind of have to get it frozen after that. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay, is the frozen it's okay? Frozen is okay. Yes, okay. absolutely. And, and wild salmon. There's a lot of farm-raised salmon now, mm -hmm. and it's not doesn't carry the same amount of uh, omega-3 fatty acids that are good for you, that help lower cholesterol and things like that. So the wild guys have a little bit more. Wild guys do, uh -huh. absolutely. Okay. They, they work for it, so yeah, you know, they have to right. swim upstream and Those everything. Those guys at the farm, they're just all laid back, they're just, you know, barely even swimming. They I don't get you. to move it, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, um, so put a little, What uh, this is that butter is, or no? That's, a, that's just a vegetable oil. Okay. And you could sprinkle it with a little bit of the seasoning. Now you make the seasoning yourself. Yeah, we and make all of our spices right in house. And okay. That's, people love our blackening spice because like I said, it's not overly salty and it's not too spicy, mm -hmm. but it adds a great, it's a nice kick. It's not too spicy? Uh, it'll be spicy that way, I'm sure. You'll, uh, there are a few peppers in there. No, I'm, I'm good. No, I'm still good. Okay. Still good. Well, still standing. Maybe some no of the hospital. salmon wouldn't hurt either. So um, now we're going to put this on here. Do I need to yes. press it in? No, no, no. Just sprinkle it on there. Okay. All righty. Is that too much? Am I being too liberal? No, that's fine. We can okay. we can get rid of the excess and then just put it right in the pan, and then you put it on the other side. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. So, Do we need any oil or anything when we put it in the pan? No, because there's already the the pan seasoned and it's oiled and the fish is oiled, so back. it will not stick. All righty. Here we go. And this pan has been heating up. Ooh. And there's wow. the smoke, and you can yep. put some seasoning on the other okay. side. Very good, very good. Now, could I get this seasoning if I came by the store and I was like, that is such good salmon. Can I get some seasoning? Would you, you sell could. it to me? Absolutely, oh, you could always get our seasoning in there. There's gotta be a half a dozen or a dozen out in every store now. Yeah, it's, okay. It's very popular. And so now are we flipping it over, or are we just searing it? We have to let it, it go doing? for a little bit. We okay. can actually probably grease up our scallops a little bit oh, to get ready to okay. blacken those. So, so we we'll let stick. that blacken, and we'll yes. put some more stuff on our scallops here. Are we using yes. all the scallops? Um, we uh, can. Well, yeah, I guess we good, are. Good. Well, that's, that's not a problem. All righty. And For, just going to oil just, these up, Just right? a touch there, yes. Okay. Do I need and to the do salmon it? doesn't, I mean, you could grill the salmon. You don't have to blacken it. You could go with no spice. It's okay. perfectly fine the way it's served here. I mean. Because I'm pretty sure if I blacken it at the house, I'm going to set off the smoke detector. Oh, you, oh, you definitely will. So doing it on the <laughs> grill is fine also. You could do it on the grill. And you, could, you don't have to use salmon. You can use tilapia, grouper, halibut. There's okay. dozens of other fish that goes perfect. Good to know. With. Now, uh, just go ahead and sprinkle this on the same yeah, way. Yeah, mm -hmm. same way you okay. did it before. All righty. 
That's it. Okay, and how's the salmon doing? Are I we said, worried about it? It's doing okay. It? No, no, it needs to come off the pan a little bit. We, it needs to come off the pan. I believe we have a spatula. Yep. It. It'll bring Sorry. itself off a little bit. I just need to scoop it out? Uh, you can, but it'll, it'll bring itself off too if you want. Okay. Okay. Very nice job. Good? All yes. righty. And are we throwing these in yet? You could put them in, sure. Oh, okay. Because the salmon will take a little bit longer to cook, but we'll throw that in the oven and finish that off. And okay. then you can... Uh, now, do the, the scallops go in the oven too, or do we need to? The scallops those? don't really need to go in the oven. They're, they're served kind of in the medium, medium rare range. And salmon too, you can eat salmon rare, you can eat it well done. It's just one of those fish that goes well anyway. Okay, how do, now, scallops I don't usually ever use because I just don't know how to cook them. I don't know if, they're, if I got good ones. How do I know if I got good scallops? Well, any kind of fish you buy, you don't want it to smell like fish. Oh, okay. If you want to believe it. I mean, if it smells too fishy, it's old. So it should smell mildly, you get a mild flavor. We use a, a dry pack or diver scallop where there's no water added, so it's meatier than some, like sometimes you'll go somewhere and order a scallop and it'll be kind of mushy. Mm -hmm. and that's because water is added to it. I gotcha. And okay. uh, just. So this is could, blackened. Do yes. we need to check to see if it's blackened on it's one side? It's ready to go. You oh. could probably flip over the salmon right, right now. So there's our piece of salmon right there. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. And gonna just go ahead and. Uh, that's oh. good versatility. Is that good? That's a peract color. That's exactly how you want a little bit of white. It's not over, you know, because you can, you can burn it if you, you can? if you leave it on too long. Okay. It will crust up too much and it will burn. But that is but that's absolutely not right. No, you see little specks of white in there, okay. and it's that's, All right. per that's perfect actually. Your first time. Thank you. I appreciate that. Very, well, when we come impressive. back, we're going to actually be putting this in the oven uh, during the break, and when we come back, we're going to be making up our salsa when Carolina Hooking continues. Are these guys okay? You can find the secret recipes of the best chefs in the Carolinas, all in one book, the Carolina Cooking Cookbook. Find the Carolina Cooking Cookbook in Amazon.com and our website, carolinacooking.tv. Welcome back to Carolina Cooking. I'm your host, Tom Zelenka, here with Rob Gottfried from Cajun Queen in Charlotte, North Carolina, and just playing with my fruit again. Um, so we're using this to make salsa, right? We're gonna make a salsa, yes. Alrighty, and not just your ordinary salsa, because I don't see a tomato out here. No, nope, it's not your Mexican salsa. I mean, even though it is a Southwestern dish, because mm -hmm. it has cilantro in it and jalapeno pepper, so. Okay, so do we start with the uh, jalapeno, or do we start uh, we'll with go the to, We'll start with the fruit. Okay. We slice off a little bit of the melon if you want. All if you want right. to start with the melon. Sure. Oh, can I use the big knife? You can use a big knife. I'll show you I'll show you a quick one here. Okay. And then just take it off the rind. Mm. Ooh. And then slice it in half. And then nice chunks. So you have something really you can enjoy to eat I'm with gonna, your fish. I'm a little afraid of the big knife now. I'm gonna stick with it. Yeah, that's probably small a good knife. thing. Woo! Whoa! Easy there. Easy. Wow. First thing they teach you is never catch a knife in school. <laughs> well, mm, uh, let's see, see, I didn't learn it's very stuck. well. Yeah. All righty. Uh, here, we'll just go ahead. There you go. Oh, thank All you. Right. Yeah, you can... I'll work the knife around. I here. appreciate it. All righty. So I'm just, I just slice around the rind here. Yes. Oh. Gosh, try not to get very talented. Try not to get the rind. No. Yeah. Excellent job. You better than I did. Ah. Uh, uh. well, well, I've had me some cantaloupe in my my. You had some time. cantaloupe? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. It's not it's not an unusual. And, and you could just slice it in half first. Okay. And then just dice, nice big dice. Nice big dice, just like yours. There you go. Perfect. All righty. Okay. Now when you were a kid, did you ever? Uh, well, usually oranges. A cantaloupe yeah. is kind of tough to fit in your mouth. It is actually it's not a difficult one. To... Yeah, but well, hang on. We'll see. We'll see. You can get it working. <laughs> Just uh, never mind until we get the joke ready here. Time to kill? Yep, yep. Okay, there. There you go. Now that's you. <laughs> so, anyhow, okay. moving around right along. Okay, we can work to the pineapple now. Oh, we, do we want to put this in the bowl? Oh, yeah, we could throw that in okay. the bowl too. Alrighty, we'll get that out of our way. Oops, piece, another piece that's just at the floor. Okay. That one's not very good. No, no, you can't use that one. Mm -mm. Okay, so we'll put that there. Okay. And what do you need? Now I'm going to give you back your knife, but don't, don't uh, throw you, it around I again, okay? You can, you can trust me this okay, time, I promise. Okay, what do we need to do? Now we lop the top off. Okay. And lop the bottom off. Okay. So it stands up nice and straight. And then you peel around 
mm -hmm. to take all the skin off. And you want to go deeper than that because you don't want these eyes sticking out. Oh, deeper? Yeah, okay. you need to go a little bit deeper because these eyes are a little woody. So it kind of what's wood. Pro go, do it one more time. Where, where do we want to cut to? You want to cut right about there. And you can always go back and pick okay. out a couple of these. And the smaller ones aren't bad, but the bigger ones will definitely so. impact you. That's perfect. Once again, better than me. It's amazing. Well, I seem a little, to be little leaving deep, a, little, a little deep there, but that's okay. A little much on it. Well, okay. Now we don't eat the middle of the pineapple because it's a hard rind in the middle. Okay. Now you slice off a side here. Okay. Do yourself a dice, like kind of like the cantaloupe, nice large size. So I slice off a side. Mm -hmm. And then a dice, like the cantaloupe, a nice large size. Okay. Doing in more? You seem like an angry man with that uh, knife. No, there. no, no, no. I'm, I, I'm, I'm calm. I'm working on those issues. Are you working on I them? I am. Okay. I am. And I I'll I made move the knife away from myself here because obviously okay. I'm yep. dangerous too. Is this enough? Uh, That's plenty. That's okay. more than enough. All right. So we're going to drop this in the drop bowl? Drop that in the bowl. Okay. Oops. Okay. We have some extra pieces here. Of course. Mmm. Always extra pieces. Mmm. Oh, that's fresh. That's very fresh. Now we can go to the jalapeno. Okay. And on the jalapeno, we have to cut down the side. Yeah, just slice it down. Just just yeah. one side will be fine. Oh, really? So, yeah, you don't need to make it too hot. You know, you're okay. serving it with blackened fish, so it's not important for everything to be overly spicy. So is that enough or we want more That's fine. You could do one more. We have a decent amount of cantaloupe there, okay. a small side. And uh, the seeds aren't what's hot. It's the white capsium here oh, okay. that makes the heat. And that's, oh. that's a good amount there okay. we have there. And we want to go very small go, dice go with this. It. You want to go with a very small dice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, Something that's, like that. That's you nice and fast. Yeah. Okay. A little finer. Alrighty. Is that enough or we want the hot mm, stuff over here? That's probably enough, but we can go a little bit more for you. Now the hot, this is where the heat is. Yes, that is You're where You're telling the, me right here, yes, but that would be hot. Yes, but a jalapeno is not the hottest pepper by far. I mean, there are a lot, it's one of the medium temperature. I mean, there's serrano peppers that are absolutely smoked. Now that's a nice dice. You sure you haven't cooked before? Is that warm? Yeah, that was where the heat was. Okay. Oh yeah, fruit, fruit doesn't really help. Nope. Milk, <laughs> milk takes away the heat. Okay, well, we'll be getting some here shortly. Okay. <laughs> um, so this goes in here? That goes in there. All right. So, kids, an important safety tip that I've taught you today is that the heat is indeed in the white part of the jalapeno. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Now we're ready. We have some diced red pepper, which mm -hmm. is not hot, which okay. is a bell pepper. All right. I'll yeah, take it's your nice word color. for that. Sweet, All not right. very spicy. We have some red onion. Thing you can put in there. How much is this? That's probably about a tablespoon. Okay. About a tablespoon of everything, a little bit less of the jalapeno. Mm -hmm. And here's some cilantro, which is a very strong, very strong herb, but so you don't need a lot of it. It picks up well. You, you don't think want... cilantro takes away the heat of a jalapeno? Um, probably not, not usually. You okay. might try it, but it. All right. <laughs> and uh, so this just gets mixed up here? Oh, uh, we, we can mix that up. We can put a little lime juice in there. You roll the lime first. Okay. To help loosen up the juices a little bit. Mm hmm Then you just slice it in half and squeeze it in there. Just we're using half of it? Yeah, you can use the whole thing for that. Alrighty. Just trying to kill that heat any way possible. Yeah, I'm you? trying to get any liquid I can possibly get at this point. Because we don't have any milk out here. You, you don't have any? Yeah, I haven't noticed. No, There's no milk. No milk out here oh, at all. Now the show really is fun that you're on fire over yeah. there. Kind of, yeah. Is That's that a nice. tear coming out of your eye or is uh -huh. that lime? Mm. Okay, <laughs> so now we mix this up. Now we mix it up. There's okay. some tongs over there I think you can use. I got them. Ooh. That's it. We can use a bigger bowl next time, but oh, okay. we'll get by with that. All right, well, uh, when we come back, I'm going to get back from the hospital, and I'm going to talk to Eris Ragazais <laughs> and find out which uh, beverage he has paired with our blackened salmon when Carolina cooking continues. <laughs> You can find the secret recipes of the best chefs in the Carolinas, all in one book, the Carolina Cooking Cookbook. Find the Carolina Cooking Cookbook in Amazon.com and our website, carolinacooking.tv.
Welcome back to uh, Carolina Cooking. I'm here with our wine expert, Eris Ragazayas, in the wine cellar at the mansion on Forsyth Park. And we are uh, we're doing our blackened salmon with our uh, uh, blackened uh, scallops, and we're also doing a, a salsa that has a little jalapeno in it. A little Aris. jalapeno. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And uh, I see so. That. <laughs> Who, uh, what wine did you uh, pick to go with our uh, with our blackened uh, dish? The German Riesling. This is Saint Christopher Riesling. Mm -hmm. You really need one, don't you? Oh yeah, yeah. If you're going to open it, we'll just go <laughs> yes. ahead and start okay. drinking it. Yeah. The reason why I picked the German wine is because I love these wines with hot food. Yeah. They yeah. Have, they have a little bit of sweetness to them, and they'll get in there and mellow you out just a little bit. Oh, that's fantastic. That sounds good to me. Am it's, I not moving fast enough? No, no, you just <laughs> just keep twisting, just keep talking. Okay. So it's a Riesling, the sweetness uh, we, that we expect from Riesling yeah, will be the, there? A nice little tautness, but a nice little sweetness. Mm -hmm. uh, not too much in the way of alcohol, but enough to cleanse the palate of some of those oily ah, hot spices you've got laying there. Fantastic swirl. Oh, look how pretty it is. Mm. <laughs> mm. Wow, wow. Very That's a good one. Yeah, and a very simple label, too. Uh -huh. A lot of these uh, wineries are feeling that the consumer can't pronounce all these long, extended names. Oh, okay. So this is a very simple bottling for your everyday meal, simply St. Christopher Riesling, just like most mm -hmm. people are accustomed to seeing. That's fascinating. And, and the Riesling is very sweet and very good, and it does help cleanse the palate and ease kind of the heat there. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and it tastes good, too. No, it absolutely is. Uh, Tastes very good. And the fruitiness uh -huh. goes along with the salsa. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that, that the fruitiness helps cut the taste of the uh, of the jalapeno and does uh, does ease the uh, <laughs> does ease the flavor of the I jalapeno. I hope it eases yeah. something, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, oh. just for you, Tom, yeah. I have another solution besides wine. Oh. Good old vitamin D whole milk. Oh. Vintage 2005. Oh, that, that just looks incredible right there. Oh, thank you very much, Harris. Uh, I see it's a it's a brand from a local grocery store, a local vintage, a local winery there. And yeah. <laughs> Harris, I got to say that you are a lifesaver. You are definitely not only a font of wisdom and wine information, you are also well, wine a uh, lifesaver. I, I got to get back to the kitchen and uh, finish up when Cal Carolina Cooking continues. You can find the secret recipes of the best chefs in the Carolinas all in one book, the Carolina Cooking Cookbook. Find the Carolina Cooking Cookbook in Amazon.com and our website, carolinacooking.tv. Welcome back to Carolina Cooking. Whew. Feel uh, better? Yeah, I feel a lot of better. I'm here with... Uh, Rob Gottfried from the uh, Cajun Queen in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I believe our fish is done. Is I that right? I believe it is. All righty. So we'll go ahead and open up the oven. Oh, mm -mm -mm. that smells incredible. Woo. Look I'll at get that. The door now, for you. How do we know that it's done? Other than it's been in there the Either required amount of time. You can, you can touch it, it's firm to the touch. Okay. And you can actually, with the way salmon is, you can peek inside because it's always uh. a little bit. A little bit uh, pink. Is it supposed to be pink or white? It inside? should be a little pink if you okay. want it medium rare. But like I said, fish, especially salmon, mm -hmm. I mean, they serve it as sushi. You can serve it well done. It's a personal taste. Okay. I'm now, not one to judge. Now this right here is going to go on the plate? Is it right? is, if we can get it off. I think we might need a spatula. You think so? No. Uh, just no. Wiggle. Oh. How about we just... Oh. Okay. Oh. There you I'm just go. Gonna piece it all back. I knew you were there. talented. There we go, and then nobody will ever know. All right. And are we putting the scallops on? Yes, there too? we'll lay a few scallops along okay. the side of the plate. All righty. Mm -hmm. That's Ooh, fine. You know, be fun. Look at that. Oh, abs. And then you got a little. Make a little face. Mustache thing going there. Oh, absolutely. And then, ooh, look at that. Oh, man, look at that. A little hair. <laughs> and then we put the uh, and the salsa, salsa goes over the salmon. Oh, okay, all right. Fantastic. Well, for presentation reasons, let's move this to the side. Oh, sorry to, hmm. but you want to top the salmon and okay. let everything kind of fall. Salmon on, the plate. on top yes, does not have to be perfect. All righty. So there goes that right there. 
Is that enough of this? Ooh, as much as you want. That's, oh, okay. That's Alrighty. fine. Can we, can we still get that on there? Oh, absolutely. All right. It's got to have me, a hat. Yeah, absolutely. Let me get you a glass of wine here. No milk? No, no, we're all we're all <laughs> done with milk, and trust me, this is a good, good um, glass. Of I water. hope so. Yeah, it really helps fight the uh, the uh, jalapeno that's in the. Um, oh yes, I've heard that. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a taste of the fish here. I'll try it too. Mm -hmm. Pick up a fork. Oh wow, that's good. I like that it's crunchy there on top. Mm -hmm. The seasoning is great. I mean, you've heard the expression many times, hot and sweet mm -hmm. go well together. Oh, and, and that's sure a not. great wine for it. To find out more about our wine here, to find out more about our recipe, find out about Chef Rob or Cajun Queen in Charlotte, North Carolina, visit our website at www.carolinacooking.tv. I'm Tom Zalenka, and that's Carolina Cooking. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Very good. Go to carolinacooking.tv for the recipes featured on this show. Plus, on carolinacooking.tv, you'll find more information on the wine, chefs, and foods of Carolina Cooking. That's carolinacooking.tv. Carolina Cooking is filmed on location in 700 Kitchen Cooking School at the Mansion on Forsyth Park Hotel in Savannah, Georgia. For details on their hands-on cooking classes, call 888-711-5114 to book a class.